everybody welcome to grace be creations this is karen i know i haven't made a video in a while um i hope that everybody had a wonderful christmas and a wonderful new year's i took a break for um a couple of weeks from my craft room um i did some projects around the house and spent some time with the family and um sometimes it's good to have a reset like um like Heather was telling me, um, and it's, when I chatted her, um, Heather from um, Rose Hill Paper, um, she said sometimes a reset is good, and I that's exactly how I see it. It's a reset, and I think the reset was really needed for me. I think I was um, really um, doing too many things at once, and I was starting to get not burnt out, but I was starting to get overwhelmed. Um, cause I'm also in therapy as well. I've been in therapy for 15 years. I'm proud to say that. Um, I've been on a healing journey for 15 years with the same therapist and I do hard work. I go to therapy twice a week and, um, he has taught me that sometimes you just have to take some time for yourself, um, just to kind of reset your mind and, um, and so I've been doing a lot of hard work in there as well. So the couple of weeks that I took off from my craft room was was very well needed. And I feel great going back into all the projects that I want to do. I want to really get my YouTube channel up and, and, um, and going on a more consistent basis. Um, I know a lot of people have asked me if I could post more videos. And that makes me so happy and makes my heart smile. So thank you so much for the support. I love you guys. I This is a great community. And so um, I look forward to making more videos. Okay, so this is by... Um, a lot of people have asked me if I could show them um, how to make... Um, one person in particular really wanted me to, um, to make a video on this. And so a shout out uh, to Carrie. Um, I'm going to show you today how to make... Um, this really beautiful, um, I don't even know what to call it. It's made out of cheesecloth. I embossed cheesecloth and people are like, what? How did you do that? Because cheesecloth is a very unforgiving, uh, material. It falls apart when you cut it. Um, but I managed to figure out how to emboss cheesecloth. Um, and it, it comes out so beautiful it's great for a book cover you can use this on a book cover you can use it on um anything in your junk journal you can make any size you want so i am going to show you how to make this um cheesecloth um, um i don't even know what to call it <laughs> um craft <laughs> so what you're gonna need is of course you're gonna need cheesecloth i have a um, a light peach pink color and then I have white I'm going to use the white one today and um, it just unrolls like that so you're going to need that you're going to need lace you're going to need um, you're going to need pearls um, any kind of um, any kind of um, embellishment you can use pearls, you can use um, um, those little, um, what are they called? I have them here. You can use buttons, you have buttons, you can use flowers. Um, you can do anything um, to put along the edges here. Um, but I'm using the pearls. You're going to need, um, you're going to need ink. To, uh, put on the back of your embossing folder so you can give it color and um, you're going to need an embossing um, tool whether it's um, the big shot or anyone will work anything that you use to make your embossing um, of course you're going to be able you're going to have to be able to um, put the cheesecloth in it but I'll show you that when we get to that point it's not hard um, it should work on um, most machines. So I will go over that when we get to that point. Okay, so 
the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to roll we're going to roll this in. We're going to fold it in. So I'm making is it a four by six or a, I think it's a five by seven. Let me just measure that really quick so I can tell you the exact size that this one is. Um, this one is, yes, this one's a five by seven. The one that I made just yesterday. I made this one yesterday and the other one I made a while ago. And I made this one on the peach, the peach um, cheesecloth. Uh, this one actually you can see a lot more, which I really like. So I'm going to try and repeat this one. Okay, so we're going to fold this in. You're going to fold it in a little on the, not tight side, but you want to overlap these. So that when you're bringing it in, you're overlapping it like this. You're going to overlap it like this. Okay, I would say about four, four or five times to give it a nice thick, not super thick, but you want it to be, you want it to be pretty thick like that. Don't mind, you don't have to worry about the wrinkles. That's going to flatten out when you put it in the embossing folder. Okay, so hold on one second. Um, the embossing folder that I use is the tree. You can use any embossing folder that you want. Um, you can do a flower. You really want to do one that's like an image. Well, you don't have to do an image, but it's in, you don't want to really use one that has like um, a pattern unless you want to. I mean, you can do any embossing folder that you want, but it looks really nice when you use an image like the tree or like a flower, like one big flower or, but I chose the tree. And so we're gonna be trimming this because of course, you know, when you go to put it in the embossing folder, it's gonna be a little too long. See how long that is? So we're gonna need to trim it. So you're gonna place, and this embossing folder is four by four by six, okay? So we're going to trim it. Let me see, I'm gonna go to the top like that. Probably gonna leave an inch on the top and I'm gonna leave an inch on the bottom. So I hope that everybody had a really good Christmas. I hope you got all kinds of goodies for your craft room or your crafting. I know I had a wonderful Christmas with my boys, men actually. They are now men, they're in their 20s. Actually, my oldest son just turned 30. Okay, um, so you can leave an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. And then you have like, I think a half an inch on the sides. Okay, so that's how you're going to do that. Now, oh, this is the most important part. I forgot to let you know. You're going to need hairspray. This is the key. This is the key to keeping the, um, keeping the uh, cheesecloth together. This is the, um, this is the sprunch hairspray I use. You can use any hairspray. Um, this is, you can use, um, Sprayed water will also help, but the little bit of hairspray is what's going to keep the cheesecloth from falling apart. Um, and that's the trick that I, um, that helped me. So I'm going to spray this. I'm going to spray it on the side because I have my um, iPad right here. I don't want to get it wet. Um, so I'm just going to go off camera and just spray it. You're not going to get it soaking. You're just going to get it damp. Okay, like that's damp. You can feel it and it smells good by the way. <laughs> it's gonna be a good smelling project as well if it's scented, okay? 
So you have that damp. Now, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your embossing folder and you're going to ink, you're gonna ink the part that does not have the raised part. You're gonna have, you're gonna ink the part that has the indentment on it. Um, because you want the indented part to be white and to really show, okay? So you're gonna take your inker, whatever ink you want to use. I'm gonna use the pink. And I'm going to ink this like so. You're just gonna just ink the top. You're not gonna get it in the crevices because you want that to stay white. So you're just gonna go along the top very lightly like that, okay? So when you go to emboss it, it's gonna only, the pink is only gonna show up on the ray, on the um, on the raised part and not the um, embossed part, okay? And then we're gonna take, I'm gonna spray this a little bit more. Just wanna make sure this gets really good. Okay, so you're gonna place it with the wet side up. I almost messed that up. Oh my goodness, you guys are probably saying no. You're going to have the tree, the ink side up, wet side up, okay? You're gonna place it down like that. And then you can trim the ends again so that you have like an inch on the end. Okay. It's gonna look just like that. Now I'm going to pause for a moment and take you over to um, the embossing machine. Okay, so here is the embossing machine that I have. You can use the hand crank one as well. I, When I made my first one, I used the hand one. Um, but I have the Big Shot Switch, uh, the Switch Plus. This is the automatic one, the one that you plug in. Um, but like I said, the hand one, the one that you crank with your hand, also works just as well. Um, but this is the one that I got about six months ago and I absolutely love it. Um, I just, I just love it. So you're going to place it down to be embossed. You're going to have the, the bottom plate. I'm doing this with one hand because I don't have my, um, my video holder over here. So I'm going to try and do this with one hand. I'm sorry if I'm like shaking all over the place, but um, I don't have a, a holder. So this is gonna be loud, just letting you know. And I like to run it through twice so that I make sure I get it really good. I'm sorry that's so loud, but it works. It works really well. Okay. I know that was probably annoying, but look at that. Look at how beautiful that came out. Isn't that beautiful? And it's stiff because you have that hairspray that held together the cheesecloth. I'm gonna take you back over to the desk and I will show you the next steps. Okay, I am back. So here you have your embossed cheesecloth. That's the back and this is the front. It came out really good, I love it. So there's, as you notice, there's no white part on the top, but that's okay. Cause we're just gonna be, um, we're gonna be putting um, lace trim around the edges, but we are going to trim this. We're gonna trim it so that we have like a half an inch, not even, just a little bit of white on the edges. Okay. Okay. If you hear these little noises in the background, that's my cockatiel bird. Um, 
sometimes he can be a little noisy. Um, he was quiet up until I started making my video. Okay, so the next step on what we're going to do is we're going to put lace around the edges. I'm choosing this lace here. You can choose any lace you want. He's actually doing the, the whistle there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can pick up on that. I'll know when I edit the video, but that's hilarious. Okay, so I'm going to take the glue and I'm using Fabri-Tac. Any glue will really do to do when you glue your lace. Um, cheesecloth, you can actually use any glue on the cheesecloth. All right, so I'm going to do the bottom part here. You want to overlap a little bit. You don't want to go right to the edge because you want to have the edges meet so that you have a nice square, square look to it. Okay, like that. Okay. We're going to do the side. I'm going to add a little bit of glue right there just because I have to overlap it. Like that. I really appreciate you guys sending me messages asking me to make some videos. And that you hope that I continue to make videos, that really means a lot to me. Like I said, I'm still a little on the shy side about making videos, but I think I'm getting used to it. I really enjoy it. I'm going to trim it like that. I'm going to do the top part. And it doesn't matter, you can overlap the tree a little bit. But because of the embossing folder, I couldn't quite get the white part any further up. Maybe I could have like folded it so that it came in a little bit more, leaving a little white on top. Actually, I didn't think about that. I can actually try that next time. Like that. And we're gonna do the last side. Do, 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 do. Now these look so pretty on a junk journal cover. Um, you can place it right in the middle and put some flowers around it or um, you can make a small one and put it on the front of a tag. Um, you can do anything actually with this. It's actually good as is. You can just use it as um, ephemera. You can do it as a gift. Um, oh, I don't like how this one is going up like that. I'm going to use a different piece for this one. There, that's a little bit better. Okay. Now, I'm going to trim the corners. We're gonna, I, sometimes I just, you can keep it square or you can make them rounded. I think I'm gonna keep this one square. This one's coming up a little bit on the side. I'm probably just gonna trim that like that. Okay. You can just trim the corners. You can make them rounded, like I said. I think I'm gonna keep this one square. All right, so now we have that. Now I'm going to use the pearls, or you can use gems, or whatever you wanna use. I'm gonna use the pearls, because it gives it an elegant look. Okay. Let me see. Oh, 
like so. This is the tricky part because you have to like cut, you have to cut them so that they can meet it, meet at the corners. You can always cut them after. And like I said, the Fabri-Tac works good for all surfaces. I don't use any other glue besides this here. This is my go-to for everything. I use this for all of my projects. It just, it works for me. I absolutely love it. Okay, so this is the part where I said it's a little challenging. You wanna, you don't wanna pre-cut them. You wanna have it like this and then cut it because you wanna leave a little over so that you can get them to connect just right. Like see how that one's over? Now I know where to cut it. I hope that makes sense. Cut that one off. I'm gonna do the bottom one. I think I gave a couple of these away in my last Happy Mail that I did with someone. I don't remember who I gave one to, but she absolutely loved it. I think it was Junk Journaling Jen. Um, I don't know if you guys know who she is, but uh, she's wonderful. Wonderful creator. Um, she's been battling a little bit of health problems lately and I've just been sending her such big prayers and I surely miss seeing her create but God willing she is going to get through it but yeah I believe I sent her one and I sent somebody else one as well I don't remember who it was but I've given a few of these away and I've made a couple of these in the past couple of days so I can test it out again and um, before I made the video so maybe I'll do another giveaway one more like that okay now we have the pearls down look at that isn't that beautiful now what I did with my other one is I added lace on the back as well to give it more lace on the top. I used this lace here and I cut it in half. Um, let me see if I have one already cut. I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Hold on. You guys are not going to believe what I just did. I have a cup of coffee near me and I just dipped that into my coffee by accident. Oh my goodness. This is going to smell like hairspray and coffee. That's okay. I'm not going to use that piece. <laughs> That's what happens when you have coffee sitting at your craft table and you're not paying attention. Oh my goodness. That's all I can smell now is coffee. <laughs> I was sitting here and I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel something wet and I'm not sure what it is. And then I smelt the coffee. I'm like, I just dipped that lace inside the coffee, didn't I? Oh my goodness. Make sure to work on a clear craft table. Okay, so I cut that lace in half. And what I'm going to do to give it a little bit more lace along the edges, and you don't have to do this. I just chose to do it so I can give it a little bit more, a little bit more lacy look. I'm gonna quickly just add lace on the edges here. And you're gonna do it the same way you did 
on the front, but you're just gonna do it along the back. Make sure when doing it on the back that you have the lace that's on the, the front side of it, you wanna flip it around so that the nice part of the lace shows. I made that mistake in the first one I did and I did it backwards. Okay. So it's gonna look like this. See how it has that extra lace look to the edges? It just it looks so pretty. I think I actually made that one a little too low, so I'm going to raise it up a little bit so it shows a little bit more. I don't know why all my lace is bending. I could iron it, but no. All right. Now you're probably wondering, how is the cheesecloth going to stay together? Well, the hairspray is the is the main is the um, the main ingredient for this project, right? The hairspray will hold it together. And then all the glue that you're putting on it to do the lace also holds it together as well. Oh my goodness, look at that, we have just enough. Just enough. Okay. Probably move that one a little bit out. Now I'm doing this a little quick. Usually I would take my time a little bit with that and like make sure it's, you know, laced down nice and even and I'm doing this a little quick just to show you guys. Um, but I'm sure you guys will take your time with that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. I actually love the way this one came out. So this will look good on a junk journal cover. Um, like I'm just showing you an example. I have a book here. I've been working on this bird journal, which is something else I would love to record to show you guys what I'm doing in the book. But I'm just giving you an example here. Like if you have a book, this would make a beautiful book cover. If you have white, white fabric and you put this right on the top on the center, use any image you want. It's endless what you can create for um, by making one of these cheesecloth embossments. So there you go, guys. Well, I hope you loved this video. I would love to see if you guys make one. Oh my goodness, that would make me so happy. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment. Hit the thumbs up because that helps me um, with my uh, get my video seen. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe because I am going to be making new videos for the new year. I'm probably going to be uploading twice a week. That's what I'm working towards. So thank you very much, guys. I love you guys and have a great rest of the weekend. Bye.